There are numerous uh, vegan websites and uh, blogs, YouTube videos uh, that are posted by vegan or vegan advocates extolling the virtues of vegetarianism. A lot of what they say is true. Uh, however, they tend to say things about eating animal protein foods that are not e either not based in fact or exaggerated. Uh, some of the things they say is very scary. Uh, uh, the, the statements that they say lead you to believe that eating meat will shorten your life. Uh, as, and any type of animal protein will shorten your life. It's not really based on any reality. Uh, there is some indications that certain amino acids, if they're restricted in animal diets, for example, the essential amino acid methionine, if you restrict it in animal diets like rats and mice and that kind of thing, they do live longer. The problem with that is that methionine is what's called an essential amino acid. Among other things, it, it, it's a methyl donor that keeps fat from accumulating in the liver. It's needed for the production of creatine and many, many other important body substances. And the fact is uh, that if you uh, completely delete methionine from your diet as a human, you're going to be in for some uh, problems that will paradoxically likely shorten your life rather than extend it. So there's a problem right there. But uh, one of the things uh, that uh, that uh, some, of, some of the vegan advocates talk about is uh, esoteric. Esoteric means like very little known. Uh, this this particular stuff uh, is very little known, but it is a bit of, it is a little bit alarming if you uh, look at the research, which I'm going to go over in a minute. Uh, the substance I'm talking about is called n glucosaminic acid. It's a it's a jawbreaker. It's usually written as n n e u five g c. I'm going to call it new five g c just for short. It's what they call a silic acid. That's a nine carbon sugar molecule that's produced by by animals, but not humans. In other words, it's produced in mammals, but it's not produced in humans. And that's the problem right there. Because uh, when you ingest substances uh, that are not produced in the human body, very often the body looks at that as some sort of uh, uh, invader, and it activates the immune system, which could cause problems. But silic acids serve diverse roles, roles in the body. They, they, for example, they mediate cell to cell interactions. They trigger cell signaling cascades and they, and they bind to pathogens and help your body eliminate pathogens like microbes and uh, maybe viruses a little bit. So silic acid of which new, 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 new 5GC is, is a, a, a one of them uh, could have some beneficial effects. But the problem is again, humans don't produce new 5GC. However, trace amounts of the common uh, of the of this compound are commonly found in hum, human urine, suggesting that new 5GC is consumed in the diet. It's coming from somewhere, and and they've traced the, the foods that contain this stuff. It's highest uh, the foods that are highest in new 5GC include red meat, eggs, and milk, which uh, which are staples of of typical bodybuilding and fitness diets. Uh, it's, and strangely enough, it's not present in fish or poultry. So if you don't eat red meat, but you eat fish or poultry, you don't have to worry about this stuff. Uh, see, neuro 5GC is similar structure, and it's similar structurally to something called neuro 5AC, which which is a sialic acid produced in the human body. And because of the similarity in structure, neuro 5GC is handled by the body's biochem biochemical pathways as native. But, see, the body's immune system recognizes new 5GC as foreign and produces antibodies, just like it would if you a uh, bacteria or virus invaded your body. Now, what ha so, so what happens is when you consume foods that contain new 5GC, it can elicit an immune response, and that can trigger inflammation and potentially provide a unique dietary link between the consumption of animal products and chronic disease. Animal product consumption as a unique source of 5GC. In the human body, new 5GC is typically bound to a sugar molecule and is incorporated into cell membranes within multiple tissues. For reasons that are not well understood, accumulation of, of dietary new 5GC in human tissues is not uniform and tends to occur prefer preferentially in epithelial cells. 
Epithelial cells are the cells that line internal organs, or, or this uh, 5G seek shows up in the endothelium, which is the lining of blood vessels, and that's where atherosclerosis occurs. Atherosclerosis is a buildup of plaque in the, uh, coron in the arteries of the body, including the coronary arteries. That's considered a forerunner of uh, heart attacks and strokes. Evidence uh, demonstrates that new 5G seep can accumulate in the human lung, pancreas, and ovarian tumors. Accumulates in tumors, therefore it might have a relationship to cancer. Dietary new 5GC is abundant in beef, lamb, and pork, as well as other animal products, such as goat cheese, caviar, and fish eggs, but not fish for some reason. For comparison, let's say the beef contains 500 picomoles of bound new, new 5GC per milligram, and then there's a couple of, I'm not going to go into the, the content of all the other foods, but let's say a standard serving size of ground beef in the United States is 3 to 4 ounces, or, or 85 to 115 grams, and that provides approximately 50,000 micromoles, or 16 grams of new 5GC per serving. Uh, as I said, this uh, uh, this preliminary this this stuff uh, new 5GC has potential to be involved in uh, both ethereal atherosclerosis and cancer. Some studies suggest that the body's immune response to new 5GC provides a mechanistic mechanistic explanation for why frequent consumption of animal products has been associated with an increased risk of developing various diseases such as atherosclerosis and cancer. One study demonstrated that when endothelial cells are treated with approximately one gram of new, new 5GC, they undergo endothelial activation, a common feature of vascular disease, as well as increased cytokine secretion. And the cytokine, cytokines are uh, proteins uh, released by immune cells that are involved in the inflammatory response. Uh, they're in the news lately because of their, uh, in, when you get the disease COVID-19, you get a, 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 a tremendous burst of uh, these uh, inflammatory cytokines that can cause uh, a, a lung disease uh, and put you on a respirator where you could possibly die. Um, they, uh, and in, in, uh, in another study, they found that new, new 5GC accumulated in atherosclerotic plaques lining the blood vessels of human aortas, again, indicating that this stuff is involved in the progression of heart disease. When you look at the whole picture, it suggests that uh, these 5-AGC uh, is a mechanism whereby dietary consumption can, can in initiate or worsen an inflammatory response at the endothelium, uh, and which again can play a role in the progression of atherosclerosis. A study that investigated the development and progression of diet-related uh, cancer found that N new, F new 5-GC can accumulate human lung, pancreatic, and ovarian tumors. Uh, using a human-like new 5-GC deficient mouse model, the investigators found that injecting antibodies targeted to new 5-GC, a scenario that would mimic the immune response to new 5-GC in humans, enhanced the growth of tumor cells. A similar study found that human-like new 5-GC deficient mice fed 0 0.25 grams of new 5-GC per gram of food and challenged with new 5-GC targeted antibodies developed systemic inflammation as evidenced by increased circulating interleukin-6, a pro-inflammatory molecule. Long-term exposure to new 5-GC, or almost two years, produced a five-fold five -fold increase in the incidence of, car of ca carcinomas and an association of, uh, with 5-GC accumulation in the tumors. Thus, the accumulation of that neuro 5-GC may promote an immune response and, and thus chronic inflammation or increased cancer incidence, at least in animals. Not a lot of evidence for this in humans. Now, what, is it, what does it mean for humans? Well, the, the, uh, the, these are all, everything I've t t talked about up to now has involved animal, mostly animal studies or what, the, what they call in vitro or isolated cell studies. Um, the, uh, the, the, but, you know, whether it occurs in humans, this is where, you know, the vegan advocates kind of don't tell you what they don't tell you, they leave out. The, the evidence that this stuff causes these same health problems in humans is not clear at this time because humans and, uh, you know, I've written this in my Applied Metabolics News app, humans and rodents and other lab animals are not the same. In other words, what can cause diseases in lab animals don't necessarily translate into what happens in the human body. There are many substances that can cause cancer, for example, in rodents, that have no effect in humans and vice versa. So 
it's a mice, and not only that, but mice, they produce neuro 5GC and they absorb 90, 98% of the new 5GC they ingest. However, humans do not produce new, new 5GC, absorb little of it from the diet and eliminate it rapidly from the body. Now that's the key. This is what I was leading up to. See, the, uh, the lab animals absorb more of it and it kind of like has, let's say, more potent effects in their bodies because they metabolize it differently. However, when humans eat this stuff in food like meat and poultry, uh, poultry and chicken and, and pork and that kind of stuff, the, the, most of it passes right through you, and, and, uh, and the stuff that is absorbed, the body eliminates it. It's out. Uh, and, and not only that, but the, the experimental system that involving mice that was genetically engineered to be, was, was genetically engineered to be incapable of producing new, G5, new 5GC, and then it was injected with new anti-new 5GC antibodies. That's not reflective of the new G of the new 5GC situation in the human body. So, uh, in other words, it looks yeah like I say the, the fact that this stuff can affect cancer and, and that in the animals it, it looks bad. But you know what what the scientists think right now is that new 5GC would be, uh, this is a theory, would be only relevant if other cancer-promoting lifestyle factors were also present. In other words, it would be accumulation of a number of factors. For example, obesity, smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, lack of exercise. All of these things predispose you to getting cancer, especially as you get older. And, you know, if you eat the foods that contain new 5GC, theoretically, it may add to the effect. The point being that neuro, neuro 5GC alone, there's no evidence that it causes these disease when, 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 when you look at it alone without any of these associated factors. Uh, uh, additional evidence demonstrates that in the absence of unhealthy lifestyle factors, meat consumption is not tightly linked to an increase in death rates. Um, a population-based study that drew data from more than 170,000 men and, and women between the ages of 30 and 75 showed that animal protein intake was associated with increased death rates only when the participants had at least one unhealthy lifestyle risk factor, such as smoking, heavy alcohol consumption, lack of exercise, or being obese. Uh, other studies have shown different results. A recent meta-analysis of 24 randomized controlled trials suggests that eating re red meat every day did not influence biomarkers of cardiovascular disease risk. In other words, uh, the, these studies show that people eat red, red meat regularly, showed no evidence of this stuff, uh, which is found in red meat. This Neuro 5G apparently had no influence on the induction of heart disease. Uh, you know, let me see, that's about, I can't think that's about all I could say about this stuff. Um, but uh, they're still doing research on it. But my purpose in, in doing this video was because this Neuro 5GC stuff has been mentioned in several blogs and articles written by vegan advocates, a couple of videos, and the way they present it, it's like anyone who eats meat will ingest this stuff, and because it causes these immune reactions in the body, it's going to cause everything from heart atherosclerosis to cardiovascular disease to cancer. But that is not at all established in humans. And again, as I said earlier, uh, these uh, these statements are based on animal studies that handle this particular substance differently than humans. Uh, in animals, the stuff is much more well absorbed and probably stays a lot longer in the body. Whereas in humans, when they consume it in meat and animal protein products, uh, it just basically is not absorbed well. And the little bit that is absorbed, the body you know kicks it right out. So probably doesn't have a chance to do anything. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see what further human studies do. But as it stands right now, just so you understand, I would not worry about this stuff. And don't let the uh, these uh, these alarming videos uh, issued by vegan uh, uh, advocates uh, scare you into thinking that, you know, meat has this poisonous substance in it that's going to kill you. Uh, there's other reasons for not eating meat. Uh, there's ethical reasons. I cut out red meat, not because of any worries about uh, Neuro 5GC, but rather because uh, I'm an animal advocate and uh, I did some research on what they call factory farms, where they treat animals, cattle and chickens horribly. And uh, it, led me, it led me to reduce my intake of, uh, 
of animal-based protein foods. I cut out red meat completely. Uh, that was uh, related to a, a case of diverticulitis I had almost three years ago. Uh, but uh, I, I don't eat red meat. I do eat a little bit of chicken. I, I do eat eggs, not every day. About twice a week, I'll eat some eggs. Most of my protein, actually, strangely enough, is it comes from protein supplements, whey protein. I, I don't eat a lot of protein foods anymore. Uh, but I still have managed to get enough protein, you know, I get all the amino acids that I need. So this is an individual thing. I mean, uh, I mean, if you want to eat meat, uh, if you really like it, then go ahead, you know. But what I would suggest if you do eat meat, is to go for the leaner cuts. Try and keep away from the fattier meat. Uh, it's not that the fat is that bad, but it contains, you know, fat contains the, 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 the most dense source of calories, nine per gram. And, uh, you know, if you eat a lot of meat with all that fat, it, it's probably not good for your health. Saturated fat does have a, uh, a role in, uh, in imposing resistant, uh, insulin resistance in the body. So if you do eat meat, try and go with the lean varieties. Um, uh, as I said in another video also, uh, if you're a bodybuilder, I've seen a lot of bodybuilders over the years have told me they cut out red meat before contests. Uh, they think they think it's ridiculously high in fat, but that only applies to like high fat cuts of meat like chuck and a couple of pork, that kind of stuff. You can buy lean cuts like sirloin and round that uh, if they're really trimmed of the fat, they don't have much more fat than fish. So anyone who cuts meat out of a diet because they're afraid of the uh, fat content is not not paying attention to science and nutrition. They're they're guys they're kind of like following the crowd. It's the same type of thinking that leads a lot of bodybuilders to uh, discard egg yolks and eat only egg whites. Uh, same thing. It's ridiculous and has no basis in fact at all. Zero. Uh, you accept a reduction in calories, but eggs don't have that many calories. A large egg has 80 calories. That's not that much. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise, science, uh, uh, fat loss techniques that really work, anti-aging research you can use today, supplement facts, which ones work, which ones don't, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, women's health and fitness, and much more. Nobody covers as many topics as I do in my applied metabolics newsletter. It's www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where every day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, general medicine, and preventive medicine. Uh, also, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, webpage, where current subscribers only. I don't accept uh, questions from uh, unsolicited questions from people who aren't subscribers. Are uh, welcome to send me a short, uh, short questions, which I'll answer for current subscribers only. You're welcome to leave comments under these videos, including suggestions for future videos. Uh, the uh, odds of me answering a question, quite honestly, left under my video are slim to none because I don't have the time. And frankly, I, I don't read a lot of the comments. Uh, I, I just don't look at them that much. Well, occasionally I do. And if I see a, a, a question that, you know, I'll, that looks interesting, I'll answer it, you know, but it, it doesn't happen very often. I don't want to mislead anyone. And however, anyone else is, uh, you know, anyone who sees somebody leaving a question under my videos, if, you, if somebody else wants to answer it, pl please do. You're welcome to do so. And uh, that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, then go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the best. Take care. Thanks for listening.